Welcome back, everybody. The sneaker resale market is fast growing, and our next guests are right in the middle of it all. StockX announcing their most recent Series C funding round, where they raised over $100 million, which officially values their company at $1 billion. The company is also announcing a new CEO. And joining us right now is Josh Luber, the co founder of StockX, the outgoing CEO. And Scott Cutler, who is the incoming CEO of StockX. Gentlemen, welcome to, to both of you. It's great to see you. And Josh, thanks for coming back. Thanks for having us. Happy so, to be here. Let, let's talk a little bit about the, well, I guess we should talk about the succession news yeah. first because you're sitting here too and we should yeah. explain why. What's going on? This is uh, three and a half years in the making. Um, Scott and I have known each other since we, we started the company, uh, literally just a couple days afterwards. And you know, at the time, Scott was at StubHub, which has been this shiny example of, for us of, of how a marketplace works with the primary market. And so he's been an advisor, a friend, a mentor, and, uh, and to have the opportunity for him to, to join the team has been, I mean, literally like a, just a perfect marriage. Scott, it's not just uh, StubHub, also eBay, where you've got a lot of experience coming into this. So what do you see in this market that makes you think this is the place you want to be? Yeah, it's interesting. When they started, it was going to be this, the combination of the bid and ask model, the New York Stock Exchange, marketplace sort of like uh, StubHub, and the blending of primary and secondary, and patterned after marketplaces, which I had been a part of. And so it was this unique combination for me personally of the experiences that I had had been in senior management in all those places and coming together in a marketplace that I'm also passionate around. So uh, why do you need a new CEO? We need nine CEOs. We need nine <laughs> CMOs. We need nine. Like, there's so much to do. There is so much work. Like, this is the, the best part of being in a hyper-growth company where, you know, in three years we've hit a billion dollars. But, I mean, this is, it's day zero around here. So, like, you know, we want the best to, uh, people we can possibly get you to go to that next move level. from the founder model to the, the more staid CEO model. I feel much better about this company. They have a CEO that doesn't wear his hat like that. Oh, on, thanks. On TV. <laughs> Much appreciated. I, mean, I, mean, yeah, yeah. I immediately think this guy is, I, I'll take you. Uh, I'll, uh, thanks. <laughs> That's all good. For me, I feel like if I'm giving you my money, right. I'd much rather get it. Is there anything you plan to do differently? you think now that you're going to be running the show? No, look, I mean, this is a company in hyper growth, and now we have to scale the business globally. We've got to scale the business beyond the categories. Uh, this is about scaling an incredible opportunity and taking advantage of what's available in marketplace. When you talk about scaling, globally, I, I appreciate yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Categories. What categories can you go into that you're not in right now? Yeah, so the company started with, uh, with, with sneakers, rapidly grew into this space called streetwear, which is you know, uh, a similar customer base and has uh, uh, watches and handbags and just recently launched collectibles. So particularly for items that have trading value, where a product-based experience uh, like StockX can, uh, can provide a unique trading experience for those products, those are the categories that ultimately will trade on a marketplace like this. Josh, I should mention a couple of things. First of all, you're sticking around in the executive team and on the board. Um, and I jumped right into this because we've had you here before, but for yeah. anybody who's not familiar with it, StockX is different than just an eBay because you guys actually authenticate to make sure that these are legit, these things are real. Is that the biggest takeaway, that that's your, your kind of competitive moat? It is absolutely one, and it is absolutely a massive value, the fact that we do authenticate. but. The fact that we authenticate products actually just facilitates the larger model, the, the stock market model, which is the real reason this business has grown so fast, and the real reason we can go into other categories, the real reason that, that you know, we're, we're here, sitting here today. Um, but it is true, if you're, if you're a 14-year-old and you want to make sure you're never going to get a fake pair of Jordans, a fake pair of Yeezys, you know, that's massive value and one of the reasons that we have four, about to be five, authentication centers around the world. With a billion dollar valuation, you are now the largest VC deal to come out of Michigan. Um, what happened? How'd you get there? It, it, like, we sound like a broken record. It's the, it's the model. It is, it is this idea of taking stock market commerce and the mechanisms of how buyers and sellers come together in the stock market and applying it to consumer goods. And that's why, I mean, that's why Scott's here. You know, that's why we're, we're sitting here today. It is absolutely the model. Scott, in terms of the international expansion, how, how will it be different? How will it be the same when you're in Europe, when you're in Asia? What do you have to do to ramp up there? Well, you've got two things that are coming together. Here, obviously, there's a big transition still offline to online. So that's going to benefit this as a what marketplace. Does that mean? Yeah, meaning that more people are starting their journey uh, on, on StockX, uh, on, on a marketplace that's today a largely a resale marketplace. So we have sellers that are coming from around the world, buyers obviously come around the world 
world. And the magic here is how we bring that together, authenticate those products, and get them to the buyers anywhere they are around the world, but how you do that in a seamless fashion. Uh, there, you know, there's a lot of work behind the scenes to make that, to make that happen. Could you ever see a day where you're actually selling a product yourself? Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have uh, a long and storied attraction to the brand, and so there are c customers that look at the brand of StockX right. as something. And, th and then also, in this model, I think we're going to see over time increasingly more brands that will work with us as a distribution channel, just like you would as a traditional retailer, to get their products directly to consumers because, quite frankly, StockX has millions and millions right. of buyers and tons of traffic. How more complicated than does that become? And the reason I ask is you look at Amazon right now, for example, they sell certain products that they're, that they're effectively uh, keeping, keeping in their warehouse, they're buying, and then they have their marketplace on top of that. And there's lots of, yeah. and, then, and then all of a sudden you have people in the marketplace that are complaining about being undercut by, uh, by, by, the, by the retailer, if you will, and if you become the retailer, how that works. Sure, well, well there's clearly, we're not gonna be creating the next Nike, we're not gonna be creating right. the, next, the next Adidas, so we're not gonna be in that uh, position of conflict. I think it's more of a question of ultimately, will those brands participate right. in online marketplaces like this? We believe they will and it's an exciting opportunity. Josh, how big is the overall market for resales of sneakers, for resales of handbags? I mean, well, I mean, what's great about this is you start to converge in the primary and secondary markets together by working with brands. The resale sneaker market today, globally, is maybe six or seven billion. Really? But the global retail sneaker market is 100 billion, and that's a fact, and that's the actual market that we're a part of here as you start to work with those brands to release products. The customer for StockX is not just that hardcore sneakerhead customer. It's everyone that's bought a pair of shoes and everyone that, that's going to buy a pair of sneakers. And so the market is really big. Do you have to capitalize on that and move from just the resales onto the bigger market in order to justify the valuation? It's not about justifying the, the valuation to do that. I mean, the valuation is just a, a function of really the small piece of one vertical in one country that we have today, right? We're just starting to expand it to Europe. We're just starting to expand it in China. We're just starting to expand it in other verticals, right? But the, the big, big idea is that not only do you move into selling secondary market products to those customers, but then primary market customer products to all customers. So like I said, it is, it is days year around here and what this looks like. You, know, you see a lot of people um, now wearing sneakers or at least rubber shoes in a professional capacity. Sure. In fact, I'm doing He's that today. Right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we know, need to and it's great because they're more comfortable. They're better for your back and, and for your legs. Uh, do you see that market expanding of kind of casual s sneakers uh, that are kind of more business wear? That would seem to be a huge market for you. Yeah, I mean, literally anybody that, that wears no, shoes. Wearing, <laughs> everybody, right? We get you in the hat more. Can we get you in the backwards hat? Can we get you to do that? <laughs> See, would you, would That's you, a little, we'll take ready. that offline. What do you mean you're not ready? Yeah. Uh, but we, uh, but also, this is news you can use for, for men who are trying to figure this out. Sneakers yeah. with suits is a very difficult thing to do. So what are you recommending? Uh, I try to do it sometimes. For, for, yeah. what, for what sneakers to wear with suits? Yeah. So today's like the only day you're not. I'm not actually wearing, I'm wearing regular um, I, I classic shoes right now. Shoes right what right is now. that? Yeah. Oh, there See, you go. Who makes these that? These are awesome, and they're like, they're, they're made of rubber. And, <laughs> who makes but that? But they kind of look, you know, I don't know, think I you can buy those shoes on his site. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah. For real, this is a real issue. It's fashionable. Yeah, yeah. Look at the beautiful. Yes, you should. You should. It is difficult. You've got to make the right choices, the right brands. No, it never looks good. It doesn't look with the suit. It never looks good. Yeah, you have to have a little bit more of a Accepted. <laughs> it's accepted. You need a more doesn't... narrow shoe. You need something. You know, you're not a big bulky basketball we... shoe. You know, Jor a Jordan one is kind of like your staple for what you want to wear, like with you a still suit. You wear yeah. Jordan. Jordan. Yeah. Right. Just, Jordan. The Jordan one, the first one. It's it's narrow. It's sleek. Like that's that's the shoe. I you guess you get used yeah. to it, but it still doesn't look. I'm gonna just good. Mm -hmm. Well, neither do those. I'm just not wearing. No, you don't either. I've never said these do. I've never said these do. Oh no. None of us are wearing shoes. Yeah, I mean, literally, like you know, last week I was in Paris at Fashion Week, and it is all sneaker and streetwear world there. You know, walking down the runway at all of the like big brand houses. I mean, the suits. They're wearing suits. With suits and and with the whole high fashion world, the convergence of all of this is is the the idea here. Not only of sneakers and fashion and streetwear, but but also of of primary and secondary markets, like it's all in just one market.